to begin with the words of Robert Frost, poetry is when an emotion has found its thought and the thought has found words. Good morning, everyone. We are here today to celebrate such thoughts and emotions that haunt every individual's mind, but find expression only in the words of a poet or an author. Our inter-school elocution competition each year finds a number of talents to, who eagerly wait year long to try out their articulate voices on this stage. Difficult as it has been, like every other year, to narrow down to two participants each to represent each house on this forum. We begin today's program by lighting the ceremonial lamp and singing the school prayer. We are honored to have our own ex-students as our judges with us this morning. Ms. Trishala Kanakya. Ms. Trishala Kanakya has passed out from the heritage in the year 2011. Trishala was the cultural secretary and the speaker of the Students' Council in school. She is a mental health worker and co-founder of AINA, an initiative for mental health reflective workshops. She has done her master's in clinical psychology and is also trained in narrative therapy. She provides individual and group therapy sessions and workshops for children, adolescents, adults, and organizations alongside working on mental health research projects. Ms. Kanakya believes that her leadership roles in school have shaped her today to become a collaborative and respectful mental health therapist. This apart, she loves spending time amidst nature, friends, and family. Welcome, Trishala. Our next judge for this afternoon is Mr. Akshay Manik, who is from the 2012 ISC batch. He was the head boy in class 10 and later the school captain. He was also the vice president of the Interact Club and the chairperson of Utopia. Mr. Manik was also acknowledged as the outstanding student personality of his batch. After doing his bachelor's in business administration, Akshay went on to join an NGO called Teach for India, teaching English and social studies to students from classes seven to nine. Currently, when not busy designing and supplying audio solutions for, her, for his clients, he is often seen drowned in a plethora of reading. He loves watching every sport and is, is an overzealous fan of Roger Federer from his school days. Welcome, Akshay. May I now request Principal Ma'am to say a few words. Today is the elocution competition for our young children. And it so happens that till 2019 or even till 2020 March, we were physically in school 
and everybody would share the excitement and wish you all the very best your friends your classmates your house uh, teachers and then of course there would be a whole lot of uh, practice sessions where teachers will take to you know they took you to different classrooms and then there was a rehearsal on stage but now for the last two years we just sitting at home and your parents have been guiding you hand holding you training you and of course virtually your teachers are training you but your parents are with you so i hope you will not forget to thank your parents today after you finish with the education so children all the very best and uh, we do hope that the best house wins and the best most deserving child wins all the very best children do well god bless thank you ma'am without much ado let us begin the journey today through such overflow of spontaneous feelings that our little ones have chosen to share with us i now hand over the proceedings to our two young presenters ritubhuti bhattacharjo and leora taparia who will introduce their friends as they entertain you with their recitations thank you ma'am a very good morning to everyone gathered here through this online platform today our friends of class 5 are eagerly waiting in anticipation and excitement to recite and express the lovely poems that they, that they have in store for you today let us all extend our encouragement to them as our friends come before you to this new medium and create some beautiful and everlasting memories through poetry we start with the contestants of aryabhat house our first contestant for the day is rashmika datta of class 5b who shall be sharing her troubles with you through her recitation good morning everyone my name is rashmika datta i am from class 5b Today I am going to recite Troubled by Trouble by Devi Ma'am. It was a day when trouble troubled me. Just as I woke up to get ready for school, something I felt was wrong. Looked outside and found the day was gloomy. Put on my socks and guess what? I felt something tickling me in my toes. At first I thought it was my imagination but no it carried on I was uncomfortable so I took off my shoes and then my socks slowly and oh jesus it was a tiny frog I was in trouble trouble troubled me I screamed out help help but no one came to me My mother called out to me, "Your breakfast is ready." I went down to find it was the same old thing, toast with jelly. I took a bite, a big bite of that hard toast, and guess what? My tooth came out right from its root. I was in trouble. Trouble troubled me. I screamed out. help help but no one came to me i was late for the bus but the bus waited for me just as i got in ruth teased me he said toothless fellow you're always late i just boxed him and made his crooked face straight there i was at the principal's office a red slip was issued to me My parents came to take me home. The stern face scared me. I was in trouble. Trouble troubled me. I screamed out, "Help! Help!" But no one came to me. I was in my room the whole day long. My mother said, "No TV for me. Just be on your own." I stood on the table to steal a cookie. 
when suddenly I slipped and hurt my knee. I was in trouble. Trouble troubled me. I screamed out, help, help, but no one came to me. I thought dinner was a good time for me to enjoy and trouble would definitely spare me. But guess what? It was just broccoli, broccoli and broccoli. Soup, boiled and pasta, all with broccoli. I was in trouble. Trouble troubled me. I screamed out, help, help. But no one came to me. At last I said my prayers to God and went to sleep quietly when suddenly the sound of a buzzing mosquito troubled me. I gave up. I knew trouble would still trouble me. Thank you. Thank you, Rashmika. Our next contestant from Aryabhat House is our bookworm friend, Satakshi Hore of Class 5G. Good morning, everyone. I am Satakshi Hore from 5G. Today, I'm going to recite Books Make Good Pets by John Agar. Books make good pets and don't mean going to the vet. You don't have to keep them on a leaf or throw them a stick. They'll wag their tails when you flip the dog to your pages. Books make good pets and don't mean going to the vet. Hunting is loved with them purring on the cushion of your eyes as if to say, Dear browser, you have picked me up before and thrown me aside. But I have more than nine lives and no need to keep on twiddling on that piece of string. Books make good pets and don't need going to the bed. They hibernate in the shell of the cover and patiently wait as long as centuries to be discovered in their own good time when a reader rolls them over on the crack spine. Books make good pets and don't need going to the bed. They're as colorful as the goosefish in all their stillness. And believe me, this is no whim. Books can glow and swim in the bowl of your imagination. Thank you. Thank you, Satakshi. Up next are the children from Chanakya House. Our first contestant from Chanakya House is Ayushman Vishnu of Class 5C. He is going to narrate what happens when Isabel encounters a bear. Good morning to all of you present here. I am Aishman Vishnu of Class 5C. I will be representing Chanakya House and today I will be reciting The Adventures of Isabel by Ogden Nash. Isabel met an enormous bear. Isabel, Isabel didn't care. The bear was hungry. The bear was ravenous. The bear's big mouth was cruel and cavernous. The bear said, Isabel, glad to meet you. How to, Isabel? Now I'll eat you. Isabel, Isabel didn't worry. Isabel didn't scream or scurry. She washed her hands and she straightened her hair up. Then Isabel quietly ate the bear up. Once in the night, as black as pitch, Isabel met a wicked old witch. The witch's face was cross and wrinkled. The witch's gums with teeth were sprinkled. How, how, Isabel? The old witch crowed. I'll turn you away to an ugly toad. Isabel, Isabel didn't worry. 
Isabel didn't scream or scurry. She showed no rage and she showed no rancor. But she turned the witch into milk and drank her. Isabel met a hideous giant. Isabel continued self-reliant. The giant was hairy. The giant was horrid. He had one eye in the middle of his forehead. Good morning, Isabel, the giant said. I'll grind your bones to make my bread. Isabel, Isabel didn't worry. Isabel didn't scream or scurry. She nibbled the zwieback she always fed off. And when it was gone, she cut the giant's head off. Isabel once was asleep in bed when a horrible dream crawled into her head. It was worse than a dinosaur, worse than a shark, worse than an octopus oozing in the dark. Boo! said the dream with a dreadful grin. I'm gonna scare you out of your skin. Isabel, Isabel didn't worry. Isabel didn't scream or scurry. Isabel had a clever scheme. She just woke up and fooled that dream. Whenever you meet a bugaboo, remember what Isabel used to do. Don't scream when the bugaboo says boo. Just look it in the eye and say boo to you. That's how to banish a bugaboo. Isabel did it and you can too. Boo to you. Thank you. Thank you, Ayushman. Coming up next from Chanakya House is Oishi Ghosh of Class 5A with a Travelers experience. Good morning, everyone. I am Oishi Ghosh from Class 5A. Today, I'll be reciting the poem, The Listeners, by Walter de la Mer. Is there anybody there? said the traveller, knocking on the moonlit door. And his horse in the silence chant the grass of the forest's ferny flow. And a bird flew out of the turret above the traveller's head. And he smote upon the door again a, a second time. Is there anybody there? she said. No one descended to the traveller. No head from the leaf princel leaned over and looked into his grey eyes, where he stood, perplexed and still. But only a host of phantom listeners that dwelt in the lone house then stood listening in the quiet of the moonlight to that voice from the world of men. So thronging the faint moonbeams of the dark stairs that goes down to the empty hall, hearkening then air stirred and shaken by the lonely traveller's call. He felt in his heart this strangeness, this stillness answering his cry, while his horse moved, cropping the dark turf neath the starred and leafy sky. For he suddenly smote upon the door even louder and lifted his head. Tell them I came and no one answered, that I kept my word, he said. Never the least still meet the listeners, though every word he spake fell echoing through the shadowiness of the still house, with one man left awake. I they heard the foot upon the stirrup, the sound of iron on stone, and how the silence surged soft 
flee backward when the plunging hoofs were gone. Thank you. Thank you, Oishi. The next set of children who are ready with their poems today are the contestants of Dronacharya House. Our first friend from Dronacharya House, Atvika Parimal from Class 5B, seems to be a TV addict. Good morning, respected judges, teachers, and all my dear friends. I am Advika Parimal from Class 5B representing Drona Charya House. Today I am going to recite the poem Television by Roald Dahl. The most important thing we have learned so far as children are concerned is never, never, never let them near your television set. Or better still, just don't install this thing at all. In almost every house we've been, we've watched them gaping at the screen. They loll and slop and lounge about and stare until their eyes pop out. They sit and stare and stare and sit until they're hypnotized by it. Oh yes, we know it keeps them still. They don't climb out the windowsill. But did you ever stop to think to wonder just exactly what this does to your beloved tot. It rots the sense in the head. It kills imagination dead. It clogs and clutters up the mind. It makes a child so dull and blind. He can no longer understand a fantasy, a fairy land. His brain becomes the softest cheese. His powers of thinking rust and freeze. He cannot think. He only sees. All right, you'll cry. All right, you'll say. But if we take the set away, what shall we do to entertain? The darling children, please explain. How used they keep themselves contented before this monster was invented. Have you forgotten? Don't you know? We'll say it very loud and slow. They used to read. They'd read and read and read and read and then proceed. And in the bedroom, by the bed, more books are waiting to be read. Such wondrous, fine, fantastic tales of dragons, gypsies, queens and whales and treasure isles and distant shores where smugglers rode with muffled doors and pirates wearing purple pants and sailing ships and elephants. Oh, books! What books they used to know! Those children living long ago. So please, oh please, we beg, we pray, go throw your TV set away. And in its place, you can install a lovely bookshelf on the wall. They'll now begin to feel the need of having something to read. And once they start, oh boy, oh boy, you watch the slowly growing joy that fills their hearts. They grow so keen. They'll wonder what they'd ever seen on that television screen and later each and every kid will love you more for what you did. Thank you. Thank you Advika. From Dronacharya House we now have Ojas Goyal from Class 5D reminding us of the Missile Man, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Oh, just can't be heard. You like. Oh. 
So just your mic needs to be redone. No. Me. Do a check once. Say, say hello. Hello. Yes, now we can hear you. Start. Good morning, respected judges, teachers, and my dear friends. My name is Ojas Goyal, and I'm from 5D. Today, my topic is based on the speech by Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam was one of the most inspiring leaders of independent India. His favorite pastime was to interact with children. He would spend most of his time meeting with children and motivating them to be leaders of tomorrow. On May 25th, 2011, he delivered a speech at the annual fest of IIT Hyderabad. This speech continues to inspire young minds even today. In this speech, he goes on to say, I have three visions for India. My first vision is that of freedom. We respect the freedom of others. In the course of our history, many nations came and invaded us, but we never attacked them. Not because we were not capable, but because we respect the freedom of others. My second vision is development. For 50 years, we have been a developing nation. It is time we see ourselves as a developed nation. For this, we need to be confident of ourselves. Along with development comes assertiveness. And this was his third vision. He said, we I think we need to carry on, have Ojas again later on because he has got disconnected. And last but not the least, we have the contestants from Patanjali House. Our first contestant from Patanjali House is Dwaita Roy Chaudhary of Class 5A. She will be sharing with us her bond with her shadow. Good morning, everyone. I am Twaita Roy Chaudhary of Class 5A, and I will be representing Patanjali House. The poem I will be reciting today is called My Shadow by Robert Louis Stevenson. I have a little shadow that goes in and out with me. And what can be the use of him is more than I can see. He is very, very like me from the heels up to the head. And I can see him jump before me. When I jump into my bed, the funniest thing about him is the way he likes to grow. Not at all like proper children, which is always very slow. For he sometimes shoots up taller, like an India rubber ball. And he sometimes gets so little that there's none of him at all. He hasn't got a notion of how children ought to play and can only make fun of me in every sort of way. He stays so close beside me is a coward, you can see. And I'd be shamed to stick to nursey is that shadow sticks to me. One morning, very early, before the sun was up, I rose and found shining dew on every buttercup. But my lazy little shadow, like an arrant sleepy head, had stayed home behind me and was fast asleep in bed. Thank you. Thank you, Twarita. Next, 
is our last contestant of this year's elocution competition for class 5 anurag chakrabarti of class 5b will tell us what it's like to be sick on a school day good afternoon everyone my name is anurag chakrabarti from class 5b representing patanjali house today i am going to recite the poem sick by shell silverstein i cannot go to school today said little peggy and mickey i have the measles and the mumps a gash a rash and purple bumps my mouth is wet my throat is dry i'm going blind in my right eye my tonsils are as big as rocks i've counted 16 chicken pox and there's one more that 17 and don't you think my face looks green my leg is cut my eyes are blue it might be instamatic flu i cough <coughs> and sneeze and gasp and choke i'm sure that my left leg is broke my hip hurts when i move my chin my belly button gave in in my back is wrenched my ankle sprain my appendix pains each time it rains my nose is cold my toes are numb i have a sliver in my thumb my neck is stiff my spine is weak i hardly whisper when i speak my tongue is filling up my mouth i i think my hair is falling out my elbows bent my spine ain't straight my temperature is 108 my brain is shrunk i can't hear there is a hole inside my ear i have a hang nail and my heart is what was that was that you say you say today is saturday ha <laughs> ha goodbye i'm going to play thank you oh just maybe Hi. have you seen your part once more Rita Modi, we'll just wait for Rojas, then we'll continue. Okay. Good morning, respected judges, teachers, and my dear friends. My name is Rojas Goyal, and I am from 5D. Today, my topic is based on the speech by Dr. A. P. J. Abdul Kalam. Dr. A. P. J. Abdul Kalam was one of the most inspiring leaders of independent India. His favorite pastime was to interact with children. He would spend most of his time meeting with children and motivating them to be leaders of tomorrow. On May 25, 2011, he delivered a speech at the annual fest of IIT Hyderabad. This speech continues to inspire young minds even today. In this speech, he goes on to say, "I have three visions for India." my first vision is that of development for 50 years we have been a developing nation it is time we see ourselves as a developed nation for this we need to be confident of ourselves my second vision is that of freedom we respect the freedom of others in the course of our history many nations came and invaded us but we never attacked them not because we were not capable but because we respect the freedom of others along with freedom comes a ass develop assertiveness and this was his third vision he said india must stand up to the world because i believe that unless india stands up to the world no one will respect us only strength respects strength we must be strong not only as a military power but also as an economic power both goes hand in hand dr apj abdul kalam came from a very humble background but because of his hard work and determination he became not just the greatest scientist of his times 
but also the head of his nation. After this, he goes on to say about the four milestones in his career. He said, I have spent 20 years in Indian Space Research Organization. I was given the opportunity to be the project director for India's first satellite launch vehicle, SLV-3. These years played a very important role in my life as a scientist. After ISRO, he joined DRDO. He was a part of the nation's missile program and played a lead role in developing Agni. His third milestone and the pinnacle of his career was doing the nuclear tests. The world was amazed with the might of the Indians. India had thus become a nuclear superpower. The fourth milestone may not be very grand in its scale, but was very close to his heart. He had once noticed how specially able children were weighed down by heavy metallic calipers. Each caliper weighed three kgs and had to be dragged about by small children everywhere they went. Dr. Kalam developed a support for them, which was just 300 grams in weight. The children were filled with joy. The parents had tears in their eyes, seeing the children move around freely for the first time. Next, he goes on to talk to the elders about the responsibility that they have towards the children. He talks about a young girl whose goal in life was to live in a developed India. He said, for her and for others, we have to make this country a developed nation. For this, we have to stop complaining. Don't ask what the country has done for you. Ask what you have done for this country. Let's do what India needs from us. Thank you. Thank you, Ojas. Let us all put our hands together and give a loud round of virtual applause to all the contestants of class five who have put up a splendid performance today. Well done, friends. While we eagerly wait for the results, let us lend our ears to four more of our friends who too are waiting to recite before you. We start with Anupriya Singh of Aryabhat House. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Anupriya Singh from class 5F. I am going to recite Dear Mr. Examiner by Gareth Avan. Thank you so much for your questions. I have read them all carefully through. But there isn't a single one of them that I know the answer to. I have written my name as instructed. Put the year, the month and the day. But after I have finished doing that, I have nothing further to say. So I thought I would write you a letter, fairly informally, about what's going on in the classroom and what it's like to be me. Mandy has written 10 pages, but it's probably frightful cough. And Angela Smithy is copying the answers of her cup. Miss Gulan is marking our homework. The clock keeps ticking away. For anyone not in the classroom, it's just another day. Mothers buying groceries, grandmothers drinking tea, unemployed men doing crossroads or watching tea. The drizzle has finally stopped here. The sun has just started to shine. And in the back garden, in Sefton Road, a housewife hangs shirts on the line. A class chatters by to play tennis. The cathedral clock has just pealed. A motor jugs steadily back and forth, mowing the hockey field. Miss Quillan, just see what I have written. Her face is an absolute 
sanılıyor çıkmaz. Before she collects in the papers, I have one little favor to ask. I thought your questions were lovely. There is only myself to blame. But couldn't you give me something for writing the date and my name? Thank you. Thank you, Anupriya. Next, we have Ashutosh Khandelwal of Chanakya House. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Ashutosh Khandelwal and I am going to recite the poem My Dog Has Got No Manners by Bruce Lansky. My dog has got no manners. I think he's very rude. She always whines at dinner time while we are eating food. And when he's feeling thirsty, he wants to take a drink. He takes it from the toilet instead of from the sink. He never wears a pair of pants. He doesn't wear a shirt. But worse, he'll not shower to wash away the dirt. He's not polite to strangers. He bites them on the rear. And when I'm on the telephone, he barks so I can't hear. When I complain to mommy, she said, I thought you knew the reason why his manners thinks he learns by watching you. Thank you. Thank you, Ashutosh. Next, we have Nisha Gagneja of Dronacharya House. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Misha Gagneja representing the Dronacharya House and I will be reciting the poem Nature's Way by Lenya Hetrick. The little tree by the old road fence grew in the summer sun. I want to grow tall, said the little tree, and growing is so much fun. The little brook running beneath the bridge babbled and sang all day. I want to become a river, it said, so I'm hastening on my way. The little bird fluttered from out the nest and flew far across the yard. I'll be a big bird, said she, and twittered. If each day I try real hard, the little boy stood on his stiff toes and stretched. I'm just like the rest, said he. I want to grow up and see the big world and the sooner the better for me. Mother Nature smiled at all her fledglings but she did not bid them stay. She knew that to live and grow and age is forever nature's way. Thank you. And finally, we have Ayushman Jalan of Patanjali House. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ayushman Jalan, and today I will be reciting the poem The Table and the Chair by Edward Lair. Set the table to the chair. You can hardly be aware how I suffer from the heat and from chill blinds on my feet. If we took a little walk, we might have a little talk. Pray let us take the air, said the table to the chair. Said the chair to the table, now you know we are not able. How foolishly you talk, when you know we cannot walk, said the table with a sigh. It can do no harm to try. I have as many legs as you. Why can't we walk on to? So they both went slowly down and walked about the town with a cheerful bumpy sound as they toddled round and round. 
and everybody cried as they hastened to the side. See, the table and the chair have come out to take the air. But going down an alley to a castle in a valley, they completely lost their way. But to see them home, safe again, they paid a ducky quack and a beetle and a mouse who took them to their house. And they whispered to each other, Oh, delightful little brother, what a lovely walk we've taken. Let's dine on beans and bacon. So the ducky and the little brownie mousy and the beetle danced on their heads and dined until they toddled to their beds. Thank you. Thank you, Ayushman. That brings us to the close of all the performances. We hope you all have enjoyed the performances by our friends. I will now request our esteemed judges to share their views. At first, we invite Trishala ma'am to say a few words. Thank you everyone for having me here. It's such a privilege to come back to my own school and hear all you young buddies and friends uh, narrate your elocution pieces. Uh, it was truly magical to hear all of you speak. It almost felt like uh, the characters and the inspirational characters, came, uh, inspirational uh, people came alive in so many ways. It was so beautiful. Uh, it takes me back to my days when I would be a part of these elocution meets and the same excitement, the nervousness in the stomach. Uh, so congratulations to all of you because uh, everyone seemed like a winner today and uh, just keep that in mind because it's always hard to choose one. All of you were really good and uh, wishing you all the very best and a very bright future. Thank you for having me. Thank you, ma'am. May I ask Akshay Manek, sir, to say a few words? Hi, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, once again, thank you so much for having me here today. Uh, it is absolutely amazing to see the level of elocution that has progressed since the time Trishala and me used to take part. And I still remember the nerves and the uh, you know extreme nervousness that we used to have before reciting. But again, listening to you guys uh, recite poets like Roald Dahl, Robert Louis Stevenson, Walter Della May, it just took us back to uh, our own schooling days and I mean the way you guys brought life into those poem pieces it's absolutely spellbinding for me to just see that how the level of elocution has risen from the time we used to do this in school and I mean wishing you all all the very best for your future but just like listening to you guys I can just I can just predict that a very bright future just waits all of you and it's it's just amazing it's amazing to just listen to you guys and it just gives me a boost you know to start my day now because i'm just so happy listening to all of you and it was just great like thank you so much for having me and all the best winning in i will say things like winning is a part of life and all of that and you guys will still feel bad even if you don't win and it's absolutely okay but i'm being very very honest when i say this all of you showed a very high level of uh, elocuting and a very high spirit of competition and it did make life difficult for Trishala and me to judge this. But thank you so much. I mean, I am thankful to you guys for letting me be a part of this. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. May I now ask Headmaster, sir, and Headmistress, ma'am, to announce the results. And before I, or rather we start announcing, uh, can we thank our two anchors, Leora and Rito Bodhi, you are both very, very nice. It was wonderful hearing your wonderful voices. Thank you, sir. Has, you, has sir. Aishi run off for a quick breakfast? <laughs> there. Ah, there is Aishi. Okay, are we ready? Really? Fingers crossed? Okay. In the fourth place, we have a tie. That means there are two winners in the fourth place. One is Tuarita 
Roy Chaudhary and the second Adrika Parimal. Congratulations, both of you. Ah, Sabri's got more fingers crossed. <laughs> Now we come to a joint second again. We don't have a third. We have a joint second. And in the second position, we have Ayushman Vishnu from Chanakya House and Anubhav Chakrabarti from Patanjali House. Congratulations, children. Yes, I can see Anubhav doing this. Congratulations. We have just got one more place and we've got so many faces. So what should we do? Okay. Uh, in the first place, a little lady sitting in a chair. Oh, not a school, but so far away. Sitting quietly, sitting all true. The little lady sitting in blue. Rashmika. Thank you, sir. Thank you to our beautiful two judges, ah. Akshay Manik and Trishala Kanakia. We are so, so grateful to you so the, because you've come here and encouraged these little children. And uh, thank you to the entire team. Uh, team. Ushashi ma'am, Anuradha ma'am, and all the teachers who've helped in putting this entire show together, the ones who've trained the children, the ones who've done the tech support. I mean, we have no words to thank you all. And thank you to all, all the children. You all are winners. And we know how tough a job Akshay and Trishala had while giving their judgments. It's very difficult because all of you were so good. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Runa, ma'am, and thank you, Headmaster, sir, because we had very little time, but thanks to your support, we did manage to have all our three recordings. So thank you so much. Thank you, Bye -bye. sir. Thank you, ma'am. Oh. Thank you, Principal, ma'am, for your inspiring words, which drives us to give in our best each time. Thank you, Headmaster, sir, and Headmistress, ma'am, for your encouragement and support. Thank you, Ushashi ma'am, for guiding us at every step. Thank you to all the coordinators and the entire team heritage. I would like to thank the judges for taking out time for this special event. Thank you, Nayan ma'am, Ishita ma'am, and Tanusri ma'am for your support. Thank you, Elora ma'am and Shohini ma'am for your guidance. A very special thank you to Shomitra sir, Pani sir and his team for their valuable inputs and technical coordination and support. Thank you Team Heritage for being such a great team. Thank you everyone for being such a wonderful and supportive audience. May we now all rise for the National Anthem. 